You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and happy Freaker Friday. It's a freaktastic day. But first, I gotta let y'all know, Grim and Moose Girl will not be on this evening for the Freakers Ball. No Freakers Ball, no balls to the wall. They get a night off. Hot diggity dog. (laughs) You go, guys, you go. Enjoy your evening off. I'm off most evenings anyway, so. <laughs> Yeehaw, and yes, it is Grammy time. You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLM Spreaker Channel on and the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, the RLM Internet Radio Station, the RLM dot, um, X or yeah, rlmradio.xyz site. Um, yeah, lots of other rlm num 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 places. And later to be on the RLM YouTube, BitChute, SoundCloud, and iHeart channels as well. I think I got them all, Grim. Hot diggity dog. That must be from all of that spring cleaning I've been doing. Been doing... It's such a beautiful day. It's been... Okay, up here in the high plains of Booneyville flyover country um we've had two and a quarter inches since sunday now out here i mean this is this is like almost desert area it really it's not desert but yeah it's pretty dry and two and a quarter inches from well it started monday basically until yesterday and yesterday was one and a half inches So today I have bright blue skies and there's no geoengineering going on outside. And so you can bet your sweet bippy I was hanging out the bedding and getting all that wonderful. And there's just a nice little, I think it's seven to nine mile an hour breeze. Wonderful. We don't get these kind of days very often. So yes, I took advantage of it. But I did not work my butt off near as bad as Grimmy did. Grimmy busted his butt. He needs to have an evening off. Oh, we don't do South Cloud anymore? Cool. Thanks, Grim. See, I I need to pay attention more often, don't I? I would pay attention, but I ain't got that kind of money. <laughs> oh, well. In any case, it is a Freaker Friday. And uh, yeah, the wheel and the wheel in the sky keeps turning. Which basically, you know, if you if you believe in the flat Earth stuff or whatever, <coughs> I don't think it's flat. I don't think it's round. I don't think anybody really knows because I know there's no damn pictures from outside the atmosphere. At least none that they're letting us see. And Google Earth is not lifelike at all. Can you say Photoshop? It's photoshopped, but it has to be. It's photoshopped, but it has to be. In any case, so we've got an asteroid with its little moon, which I'm thinking if they named these words properly, it would be called a hemorrhoid. Instead of the hemorrhoids being the pain in the ass, you would have asteroids that are a pain in the ass, and hemorrhoids would be up in the hemisphere. But no, they don't do things logically. we got to have an asteroid with its little dangleberry following along, and it's going to do a close call on us tomorrow. So I thought, hmm... The wheel in the sky, although with us, or at least with me, the wheels of the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Oh, well. So, I suppose I ought to quit being such a goofball and say hey to everybody, shouldn't I? Over here on Twitter, thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate everything you do, Barman. Even though you're a bot, I still love you, dude. You're the bottiest bot in the whole wide world. Except for maybe Vanna White. I really, of course, Vanna's your girlfriend. So, you know, 
significant other, however you wish to put that. What is this? Thomas Sowell says, Many on the political left are so entranced by the beauty of their vision that they cannot see the ugly reality they are creating in the real world. Oh, I don't know that, that their vision is actually all that beautiful, except for maybe from their particular perspective, because for the rest of us, it's but ugly. It just, it really is but ugly because the consequences, whether intended or not, of all of their vision are not pretty. And guess who gets to pay for it? Everybody else. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Arlene, by the way, over here on Twitter. Um, and make sure, oh, I see Gary Ella's over here too. Yay. Hi, Gary. Okay, over here on Fakey Book. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. There is flooding in southeast Kansas, by the way, and I got a lot of family down there and in Oklahoma. And yeah, it started in Nebraska and it's working its way south. We've had, and from what I heard earlier today, they are expecting anywhere from six to 10 inches in south. It depends on which forecast you're listening to. Apparently that 5G is really messing with the weather forecasting stuff or they let an idiot cousin play with the heart machine again. I'm not sure which, but I'm sure it's not natural whatever is going on. My thoughts. But, hey sis Donna, how you doing, sweetheart? Um, yeah, and she's down in that neck of the woods. She's in way southeast Kansas. Actually, about as far away from the uh, Missouri... Oklahoma border as I am from Colorado, Nebraska. So, yeah. Opposite bookends. In any case, yeah. Nasty, nasty weather's been going through here. And nasty weather in Oklahoma, too. Good Lord Almighty. Somebody needs to stop pushing those buttons. Mother Nature, take the controls back. In any case, over here on RealLiberty.org, I see Grimner's over here, as well as Bob Renner and Rob Works. Hey there, hi there, and Grimmy, let everybody know over here that I am live and in person over here on here, oh, blah, 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 here on that Freedoms Network, that effing site. Once again, Grimmy said, yeah, she's here, she's live. Do what? <laughs> you lost audio? Uh-oh. Okay, and it's back, and now it's, oh, it's your audio that keeps dropping out. Let me look. It could be my interwebs, too, because we have had some wonky weather, and my internet has been real wonky the last week or so. Internet and cell phone service have both been really, really atrocious. It's like, holy crap, I pay you guys for this? Thanks. Loads. Should be able to go wireless. Oh, you're hearing, well, honey... I'm still broadcasting. Oh, I did drop. Did I? Yeah, I did. For just a sec there. What the hay? What the hay? I don't understand it. But, huh. Cut that out, Sam. Sam broadcaster. In any case, where am I at? Where am I? I'm lost. I'm confused. Okay, Freedoms Network. Once again, thanks, Grimmy, for letting everybody know I'm live in a person over here. Um, I also see... That was my phone. Holy smokes. I also see the lovely Estrella was over here for a while, as well as KD Troxel and Bob Renner. And, uh, yeah, those birdies are telling us just how dumb we are. and <laughs> Nobody's paying attention. It's called the birds and the bees for a reason. You know? And actually, according to Anastasia, which that's the way you're, the, they say it in Russia... Uh, over here we say Anastasia, or Anastasia, but over there it's Anastasia. In any case, according to her, um, the birds and the bees, the reason why they are so important is because that the uh, birds, when they come along with their bird song, they're the ones that they wake up the trees, which wake up the grass and wake up the flowers and all of that other fun stuff to get them all to start, you know, doing their thing. And then... Um, the bees come along and they are the little pollinators and they help everything grow better along with the butterflies and a few other little critters. But yeah, so it's the birds and the bees for a reason. You got to have the birds and you got to have the bees. 
in order for the whole cycle of life, the wheels on that bus that just keep going round and round and round. Um, yay, the bubbler. Okay, I've been to Effin, I've been to Real Liberty, I've been to Fake Book, I've been to Twitter. I need to go to Mines because I've lost mine. I put it, I put it down in a really safe place. <clears throat> And then forgot where I put it. It's so safe. It's safe from me. In any case, hey everybody over here on Minds, if you are listening in, how you doing? Uh, over here on inthematrix.com. I didn't let anybody know I was live, so. And I don't think that they really. But hi anyway, how you doing? I know everybody's very, let's see, oh, a happy Memorial Day. Why do we have to have specific days for this stuff? Why can't we just do it whenever, every day? You know, if you want to be thankful for someone, just go up and say thank you. Why do you have to have a special day for it? I'm thinking it's so somebody can make some money off of you. That's what I'm thinking. Of course, you know, I'm thinking this whole time thing is a mess too. So, who made up that crap? But that's a whole different ballyhoo ball of wax that I may have to go into one of these days when I actually have my ducks in a row. <laughs> yeah uh-huh okay there you go Ooh, a solo cup that looks like a ufo how cool that solo cup posted that so parent oh hey and tom hall over here on twitter i'll just go ahead and put this link in the chat real quick uh meteor lights up south uh sky over south australia and splashes down in the ocean uh, it was estimated to be the size of a car and hit the water at 7 miles per second. Wow. Okay, I'm not going to watch the vid because I'll be easily distracted. And yeah, yes, Vinny, I said easily if you're listening. In any case, oh, zombie, yeah. Yeah, Grim, I know. Okay, so I think I've been to all of those social sites now I need to be over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be as well, listening in in the RLM. Also, um, if you're listening in on Spreaker, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back. In, or maybe I won't. It just kind of depends on the day. And today, I, I thought I was doing good until I wasn't. So, <laughs> but I'm laughing at it anyway because, yeah, I can be a dork. Hey. Okay, so right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Grimner, the RLM god. DC is here as well as Asmo, Chalsa, Denis, free enslaved. Hey, free, how you doing, hun? I'm here as well as I be Don C. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is also in the house as well as Meister Brower. Ponder Gander, who had a show earlier today. I was outside hanging out laundry and, and doing other outside kind of things because outside and mid 70s and nice, not raining. So, yeah, I was outside. Uh, the lovely Kate is also here as well as Rob Works, who fired up that bubbler. Booyah, Rob Works. Thank you very much. I also see Romes is here as well as the lovely Vanna White. Vinny is also in the chat as well as the Weather Dork and Z, Beth Z. We got some Phantom going on in the chat as well as that Cyborgian Cyborg Noodle who's going to touch you with his noodly Cyborgian noodliness. Arg. Dakota is also in the chat as well as Frumped and Frumpy. Ooh, got a double dose going on there. JJ's 999 is also here as well as Kiss with Kiss underscore. See, double kiss is going on too. Booyah, bonus round. Moy, 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 moy is also here as well as Sock Puppet. And to round out the crew, Smartaz. Smartaz what? That's what I'd like to know. Or maybe not. Adorkable, that's right, I am adorkable, Frumped. <laughs> I wear that label proudly, by gosh and by golly. Okay, let me see, make sure I got everybody, everybody. You know, seeing this Dakota thing, did you know that um, yesterday, Colorado Springs got almost 20 inches of snow in the overnight? Yeah, 
23rd of May. <laughs> and they got damn near 20 inches of snow overnight. What the hell? Somebody's playing with buttons. In any case, let's go see who's over here in the red pill as well while I'm here. Apostle is here as well as F. Canella. And Frumpt is over here. Juana Taco, KD Troxel, Q Cupcakes, Soily Underscores. Ventures is also rounding out the crew over here that's not in the RLM. So I guess it's time to go and check out what I threw in my pocket. You know, I was putting all this kind of stuff in my pocket earlier today. Like, you know, waiting for the dude to come off so I could go out and play and not get soaked. And, um... I uh, inadvertently closed my pocket and it's like, what? 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 Thankfully, I am figuring Brave out. It does have a few little quirkies to it that not quite like what I was used to. And um, so I found it again. <laughs> I was able to put it back. I have my pocket on my bar, on the bar, but yeah. In any case, you know, I was talking about the weather and 5G and yeah i i've been mentioning it over on twitter a couple of times and i'm i'm thinking that maybe somebody that actually understands the chemical kind of aspect of it will look it up and see if zinc really zinc paint really works to block the 5g signal because if it does i'm betting that somebody's going to be cornering the market on that stuff <laughs> yeah so get yours quick while you can this though is from wired.com and it's 5g networks could throw weather forecasting into chaos chaos egad oh i only get free three free articles left this month oh no heaven forbid now, this was actually dated the 15th of this month, so let's go check and see what they got to say about this. So if you had a choice between a better, faster cell phone signal and an accurate weather forecast, which would you pick? Okay, number one, right off the bat, I got to put this out here. That better, faster cell phone signal, the difference between 4G and 5G in the speed of what's coming to your phone and what's going out of your phone, is basically that speed differenti differentiation, spit it out right, is the same amount of time it takes you to blink. That's how much faster it's going to be. Just that little blink. That's the only difference. So do you really want to risk cancer and neurological damage and all this other fun crap? Damage to the environment. Just so something will download... A blink of an eye faster than it did before. I don't think it's worth it. But just throwing that out there. <clears throat> and that is, yeah, look it up. I'm not doing the research for you. Look it up because I looked up multiple and found it on several different scientific. So do your own research on that one. I'll give you this link. So in any case, that's the question facing federal officials as they decide whether to auction off more of the wireless spectrum or heed meteorologists who say that such a move could throw U.S. weather forecasting into chaos. Oh darn, would it take down the HARP system? Well, unintended consequences. Um, oh, okay. <clears throat> See, and I still, I use my pocket, Graham, but, and, and you can get pocket and use it on, um, on Brave, but I haven't, I haven't done that read later. I may have to check that out. Um, I'm, I am also having a few little, in the back of my mind, little, you know, I have that little voice back there that's pushing the cobweb out of the way and saying, it's Chrome. It's Chrome. Isn't Google Chrome? Isn't Chrome Google? It's Chrome. So I'm having a little bit of an issue right now on deciding if I really trust Brave or not. Because it's Chrome. So, just saying. Okay. And maybe I just don't understand how things work. But it still bothers me. <clears throat> Excuse me.
back to this article. So on Capitol Hill Thursday, the um, last week Thursday, apparently, NOAA's acting chief, Neil Jacobs, said that interference from <clears throat> excuse me, from 5G wireless phones could reduce the accuracy of forecasts by 30%. Wow. Okay, they're already only accurate maybe 40% of the time. <laughs> I mean, what other job can you have that you're accurate that low of levels and still get to keep your job and get paid? Seriously. You know, unless it's like within the la next hour or so, their accuracy level really pretty much sucks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moving along. Apparently, he says, that's equivalent to the quality of weather predictions four decades ago. So if you look back in time and see when our forecast scale was roughly 30% less than today, it was 1980s. You know what? In the 1980s, you guys were actually... Uh, of my personal opinion, a lot more accurate. I still remember those days. I still remember them. But that's what he told the House Subcommittee on the Environment. Now, that reduction could give coastal residents two or three fewer days to prepare for hurricanes, and it could lead to incorrect predictions of storms' final path to land, Jacobs said. This is really important, he told the ranking member Frank Lucas from Oak. Oklahoma. Um, in any case, um, <clears throat> yeah. Are you just worried about the people on the coasts? You know, there's an awful... Oh, wait a minute. I just live in flyover country. I don't matter. Yeah. Keep it up. Keep it up. In March, the FCC began auctioning off its 24 gigahertz frequency band to wireless carriers. Despite the objections of scientists at NOAA, NASA and American Meteorological Society. You know, and that's basically because all of these different government agencies, they're all in it for the money. Follow the money. See, they're auctioning this shit off. That's what you're worth. They're, you're, your health's going to the highest bidder. But it will be a blink of an eye faster. Not in a, it won't download in the blink of an eye. The difference in download speeds will only be a blink of an eye faster. Get that in your head. Let that swirl around a while. Now, apparently this week, Senators Ron Wyden of Oregon and Maria Cantwell of Washington wrote to FCC Chair Ajit Pai requesting the commission stop companies from using the 24 gigahertz band until a solution is found and to delay any more of the auctions. But, you know, Ajit Pai got to make that money. You know, bonuses. Damn it. I want that sales bonus. Apparently, Jordan Girth, a research meteorologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, has been studying this issue as part of a group of American Meteorological Society. And he says that while the FCC can switch which regions of the spectrum it allocates to phone companies, forecasters are stuck. That's because water vapor emits a faint signal in the atmosphere at the frequency of 23.8 gigahertz. That is extremely close to the one sold for next generation 5G wireless communication. Satellites like NOAA's GOES R and the European Met Op monitor this frequency to collect data that is fed into prediction models for upcoming storms and weather systems. We can't move away from 23.8, or we would, Girth told Wired. And as far as 5G is concerned, the administration has a priority to put 5G on the spectrum. And they thought this was an okay place to do it. Okie dokie. We'll just mess with everything, won't we? Now, it's just close to where we are sensing the weather, Girth says, and that wireless carriers could turn down the power emitted by 5G cell phone transmitters so they don't drown out the sensitive sensors on the satellite. How are they going to drown out the sensitive sensors on the satellite if the satellite's supposedly in outer space? Hmm. 
Now NOAA and NASA want to limit the interference noise at the level closer to what is considered acceptable by the European Union and World Meteorological Organization. NOAA's Jacobs told the House Committee that the number currently proposed by the FCC could result in a 77% data loss from NOAA's satellite's passive microwave sounders. Oh, so we're, we're already getting nailed with passive microwaves. And now they want to add 5G to it. Yay! <laughs> That's like microwave on steroids, isn't it? He also said that experts from the two agencies are trying to work out a compromise. I'm optimistic that we can come up with an elegant solution, he told lawmakers Thursday. An elegant solution. Anybody think and reset? I know there's not very many of you that probably follow the whole reset thing, but the, uh, the, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm smelling a reset, reset coming on. That's what I'm thinking. In the meantime, Girth says that this issue probably won't go away anytime soon. The FCC plans future 5G auctions for the radio frequency bands near ones used to detect rain and snow, which is 36 to 37 gigahertz, and the atmospheric temperature of 50.2 and 50.4 gigahertz, and clouds and ice, which is 80 and 90 gigahertz. This is not one and done, Girth said. Today it's 23.8. Tomorrow it's 36. Oh my. And the State Department is negotiating with other nations over interference level, which will be settled at a World Radio Conference in October. The FCC's 5G auction has reaped nearly 2 billion with a B from both small and large wireless providers and is still underway. Are you starting to smell where it's coming from? Follow the money. Follow the money. Sorry, sons of bees. <sighs> no, nobody asked for 5G. Not that I know of. Rascal, I love you, baby girl, but your claws hurt. My key cat is helping again. Um, indeed. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Pocket, pocket, what's in my pocket? Besides lint. Okay. It is a Freaker Friday. And since they're trying to fry our brains and mess with the weather, let's just check this one out too. Because you know your brains are already going to be fried. So... You're probably not going to notice the difference anyway. But, this is from April of this year, from CNET.com. Another fast food restaurant that just, just in case I ever got the hankering and was anywhere close to one, I'm not going there anymore. Blake King made a meat-free Impossible Whopper, and it tasted like real burger. <laughs> no. Apparently, they ate Burger King's new Impossible Whopper made of plant meat. And, yeah, okay. The Impossible Burger is coming to Burger King as the Impossible Whopper in a market test that could lead to the largest restaurant industry embrace yet of a plant-based meat substitute. The Impossible Whopper will feature the same bun, cheese, and condiments as a traditional Whopper. In other words, it's going to be a bun made with genetically modified or grains that are soaked in glyphosate before they ripen, um, and cheese that really isn't cheese, and condiments that are that mystery special sauce and yeah an impossible whopper but with impossible's plant-based patty where animal meat is normally found yeah 59 burger king stores in the st louis area will offer it starting today that's april the second so see they didn't do this on april fool's day because everybody would go yeah <laughs> april fools no <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, St. Louis. And it has a potential or yeah, potential of expansion to the other 7,100 U.S. restaurants later in the year. 
Now, Boyka King is making an unusually high-profile endorsement of the plant-based meat, while Impossible is facing its own Tesla Model 3 moments in terms of going mainstream. I got a jump on the debut when I arrived at Impossible Silicon Valley headquarters carrying two bags of Whoppers from the local Burger King. There, J. Michael Melton, Impossible's technical sales and culinary manager, cooked up a batch of the patties that they're supplying to Burger King, using the same broiler Burger King uses. And he swapped them in for the meat or the beef in the Whoppers with professional dexterity that someone um, somehow left the burgers appealing, and I took a couple of bites. So, okay... The remarkable thing was how unremarkable they were. Nothing gives away the fact that this Whopper contains a different main ingredient. The patties supplied to Burger King will be based on Impossible's new 2.0 formula formulation. <laughs> Why do they call it a formulation? That always makes me think of an evil mad scientist. And apparently that was announced at CES in January of 2019. Now, among the upgrades, this formulation holds, a, uh, holds up better in restaurant environments like sitting in hot holding trays or the six-inch drop at the end of the convoy that grills the patty for exactly two minutes and 35 seconds at 630 degrees. Wow. Do, nobody flips boigas anymore? Hmm. So... We're making meat from plants. That's never been done before, Impossible Foods founder Pat Brown told me, tacitly demoting com uh, competitor Beyond Meat's plant-based burger, which has been offered at most of the 1,100 Carl Jr. restaurants since the beginning of 2019. Now, people have made plant-based replacements for meat, but they haven't made plant-based meat. One way the Impossible Burger will um, indeed differ from the original is price, costing a significant $1 more in an industry where brands have gone to war brandishing menus of items that only cost a dollar. As with electric cars, price parity with the established choice is a future linchpin to mainstream success, which I'm sorry, I'm looking at the pictures that they have here. It does not look appealing. Not at all. I'm thinking, it's no wonder I haven't been to the home of the Whopper in quite some time. Ick. So, once we have products that taste the same or better and that cost less, plant-based and clean meat will simply take over, according to Bruce Friedrich who's the executive director of the Good Food Institute, which champions plant and cell-based meats. So very little will uh, change in people's everyday lives as more and more meat is produced either from plants or from cells. Consumers will continue to buy burgers, chicken sandwiches, and sausages, but those products will simply not have the adverse impact of on our environment and global health. You know, I... Any of you guys ever watch Eureka on the Sci-Fi Channel? And if you do, do you remember the episode where the gal was was um, doing uh, chicken that was like it was not really chicken, and it was not good. People got stupid really fast. Maybe that's the alternate. Maybe that's the ultimate. I don't know. Hmm. In any case, Burger King doesn't break out sales figures for Whoppers, let alone its expectations for the more expensive Impossible Whopper, but some insights can be inferred from a 2018 survey by Fawn Analytics. Assuming price was no different between beef and alternative burgers, 65% of consumers polled said that they would still stick with the beef. 21% would choose a plant-based burger like Impossible, and 11% would select a cultured beef grown from animal cells, which isn't expected on the market until the early 2020. 
That cultured beef from animal cells, that's that whole Eureka show. Look it up. They It's on Netflix now, so, yeah. And only it was chicken. <laughs> not good. It was not, it was a happy ending eventually, but, yeah. In any case, back to this article. Impossible's Pat Brown feels such surveys leave out the qualitative experience. If you give them our burger and then ask them the question again, a very large majority of them say that they would definitely buy it and would be willing to pay a premium for it. See, and that's always what they do. I mean, if you don't have the whole cost of uh, raising the cattle, you know, feeding them and and the hormone shots and the and the antibiotics and you don't have all of that expense going into and then having to process the beef and all why is why is a plant-based one more expensive plants grow everywhere what are you doing to those plants what are those plants i want to know the recipe see i'm nosy apparently acceptance of plant-based meats turns not only on taste, texture, and price, but on overcoming momentum. Environmental and animal welfare arguments have triggered a million conser- uh, con- blah, 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 conserva- or conversations. Spit it out, Grams. A million conversations and social media posts about meat's issues. Yet U.S. per capita meat consumption hit an all-time high in 2018. You know, even their regular patties don't look like meat. Apparently a recent customer, <clears throat> excuse me, or consumer survey also found that concern for personal health handily trumped concern over the environment and animals as a driver of plant-based meat choice. We need to change the meat because we aren't going to change human nature, Friedrich said in a recent New York Times profile. Launching the Impossible Burger in Missouri, the Show Me State, rather than in one of California's crunchy kale enclaves, is jumping right in. Given that Missouri is the first state to make it a crime to use the word meat to label a product that is not derived from harvested production, livestock, or poultry. With up to a $1,000 fine and a year in prison. But the 62-year-old Whopper brand is sufficiently synonymous with beefiness that the impossible version should communicate meatiness without having to use the M word. Apparently the biggest shoe yet to drop is, of course, Mickey D's. With nearly four times the U.S. sales of number two Burger King, few restaurant brands coin more mainstream food trends. Yet Mickey D's has eschewed both Impossible and Beyond Burgers. Instead, it offers its own McVegan Burger in Finland and Sweden and the Vegetable Deluxe in the U.K. and neither sandwich would likely be mistaken for a hamburger. And while burgers are the American diet icon, steaks aren't far behind. And an even bigger challenge in alternative meat marketing may soon unfold as fast casual steak chains like Outback and Texas Roadhouse. Unlike burgers, steaks generally arrive on the plate unadorned, without a bun, cheese, or condiments to mask any shortcomings. So get steak right. So the thinking goes, and the plant-based dominoes begin to fall. Oh, if Texas Roadhouse goes with the unmeat meat. Oh, I like Texas Roadhouse. Damn, don't. Mm. Oh, well. Impossible's Brown says Burger R&D Research and Development has prepared it for the challenge. I can say with complete confidence that we're going to nail it and not only make a great steak, but we're going to make a steak that's as good as anything that ever fell out of a cow. Okay, honey, you know what falls out of a cow? Are we going to be going with that whole McShitburger thing? I hope not. I do not want a McShit steak either. (sighs) Wow, this is just crazy.
just crazy, I tell ya. Yes, Grim, stupid chicken. And you got the you got the duck. Wow. I only have ninety eight ducks. Damn. Okay, moving along. I need to go check out the pig. See what happened. This date in history. Is the pig in my see that's one thing I'm not real crazy about with Brave is it doesn't really show my um where I've been. And it's like, damn it. Damn it. Okay. You know, like I used to have little, I, I had little shortcut links along my, um, and yeah, Brave doesn't do that. Not like, not like Opera did. I like the Opera setup. I'm kind of a wuss. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to do this. There we go. So, over here on PIGazette.com, where Hambo and Porcus reign supreme, pass the bacon. The word of the day is intellectual hernia. <laughs> I know people that do that. It's a painful, mind-numbing malady incurred by the chronically offended. It's a side effect of lifting that microaggression-fueled, trigger-warned, Jupiter-sized chip on their shoulder day after day. Ah, that's what does that. Okay. I know a lot of people that have intellectual hernias, but I didn't realize that also caused it. In the quotable quotes section, this president is the most abused president in American history. I could care less if they think he's abused power. You know who is abusing power. It's the courts that you just mentioned. Do you know who's abusing power? These chairmen who issue these outrageous subpoenas against his family for his bank accounts and all the rest. Then they pretend we're in a constitutional crisis when the president dares to say no and takes them to court to get in front of one of these Obama judges. Then you see what they do. That's from Mark Levine. Which, um, you know, why is it... This is just a whole bunch of hypocritical smoke and mirrors as far as I'm concerned. You know, whenever somebody said, show us your your college papers, show us your birth certificate, show us your your tax return, show us your whatever to Dangleberry, we were all freaking racists. If we even mentioned something along those lines. But by gosh and by golly, we can go to court and make this POTUS do a show and tell. Either everybody gets it or nobody gets it. It's across the board treatment. If you're going to be calling people names and saying that's unpatriotic and all that other nonsense when we do it to your POTUS, then don't you do it to this POTUS. Hypocritical asshats. Okay. Oh, well, you know what? We were just, or I was just talking about the uh, Boyga King Impossible Whopper. This is in the Tasty Tidbits section over here on the pig. Uh, the News in Zingers by Argus Hamilton. Apparently, the World Health Organization published a new survey to measure how the obesity epidemic is sweeping the world and which countries are the most affected. It shows that Mexicans have replaced the Americans as the world's most obese people. That's because they're all living here. Uh huh. Okay. Disneyland and Disney World will not allow presidential campaigning in their parks this year. However, with the 2020 campaign starting to heat up, Disney did cave in to partisan pressure and agreed to rename Donald Duck, Donald Duck simply Duck. To balance things out, Goofy will re be renamed Biden. <laughs> President Trump sent the USS Abraham Lincoln carrier, uh, Aircraft Carrier Task Force to the Persian Gulf to confront Iran over its attacks on U.S. interests. Military experts say that the deployment risks turning the Persian Gulf into a theater of war. It has been. What do you mean risks turning it into? It has been. Hello? 
So sending Lincoln into a theater, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, that's kind of, wow, looking at it like that, yeah. Bernie Sanders posed with a black man who owns a fried chicken joint in South Carolina and was accused of racism for holding up a drumstick. Not again. I'm begging the left to stop, claim, stop claiming fried chicken is racist. Before it makes fried chicken so popular, it takes an hour in line to get my order, which, yeah, you know, when they all jumped on Chick-fil-A, the lines were around the block. It was crazy. And I'm talking Wichita blocks. You know, these are big city blocks, not my little town blocks. These are big city blocks. It was freaking crazy. He had to call ahead, like two hours. And the only reason, and that was the only time I've had Chick-fil-A, actually. My daughter wanted to support Chick-fil-A, and I said, okay, sounds good. I've never been there. I can try it. And she called, and I said, when are we having supper? And she said, oh, in a couple hours, but you have to call ahead because they're so busy. Two freaking hours. It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, back to this. Michigan GOP Congressman Justin Amash angered the White House and House Republicans by announcing that he favors impeachment, making Amash the darling interview of MSNBC and CNN last weekend. It also, or it makes no sense, because Amash is a libertarian and Trump is nothing if not a libertine. <laughs> okay. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell introduced a bipartisan bill that would raise the legal age for a person to be able to buy tobacco products to 21. A cigarette is just like a squirrel. It's completely harmless until you put one in your mouth and set the end of it on fire. That's right, you know? I mean, cigarettes, you can put a cigarette in your mouth, and if someone accuses you of smoking, you can just look at them and say, no. The cigarette smokes. I'm just a dumb sucker on the end. Ba -doom -boom -boom. Now, President Trump unveiled his immigration plan based on a person's education and high-tech skills. Brokers on the commodities exchange are the only crop pickers he wants to admit. Give us your tired, your poor, and your huddled masses yearning to abide by Apple's terms and conditions. No, thank you. The London Times reported that the International Bureau of Weights and Measures changed how to measure kilograms. It affects every metric measure down to grams. Adding everything up, I discovered during my 20s that I was overcharged for 400,000 or overcharged by $400,000. Now see, this is the kind of nonsense. It's just like when they did the Gregorian calendar. Oh, well, we're going to change the timeline. We're going to do this. It's now it's you have to go with this one. You know, we've been using this for centuries and it's worked just fine for everybody. But we don't like it anymore. So we're changing it. Captain Asholio. Good job. Joe Biden's huge lead over the Democratic field suggested that mainstream voters are drawn to a centrist Democrat, not socialists. There's a new drinking game sweeping the country, too. Every time Elizabeth Warren proposes a new free government program, you drink someone else's beer. <laughs> I don't think so. House Democrats vow to sue POTUS Trump to produce administration witnesses for grilling by committees. Trump has won 450 lawsuits and lost 38. It took 230 years. But we finally have a president with a better one-loss record than Barry Schweitzer. Hmm. And finally, the former FBI director on CNN last week began dodging responsibility for the false information in the FISA warrant against the Trump campaign that launched the Russiagate probe. Those damn Rushkies. He shifted the blame to the CIA. James Comey insists he did everything by the book, and he did, if that book is 1984. And those are those lovely little tidbits. Now, for this date in history, yes, I see a flasher going on. Yes. Um, do what? 
In five years, you will be able to crap. They call meat for less than the price of meat. Oh, no. Thank you. Ick. Ick. I do want to check that out, though. I don't know why, but Beyond Meat CEO. No. Okay. This date in history, the 24th of May, 1846, or so they say. Mexicans try to be thrilled when General Zachary Taylor sets up vacation home in Monterey, Mexico, and brings U.S. Army with him. This date in history, the 24th of May, 1866, a dude named George Berkeley, Bishop of Cloyon, um, has, a, has his good name sullied when it's applied to a correctnik blight, Berkeley, Mexifornia. Yay! And finally, this date in history, the 24th of May, 1899, when the first auto repair shop opens for business in Boston, Mr. Goodwrench tells a bloated speedo-wearing lib to fit his ride with pontoons. Did you know that the first automobile dealerships were actually garages and your vehicle was sent to them in a box and they put it together there? At least with GM, that's the way it worked back in the days when I worked at the car dealership, that was one of those little known history things. And it's like, wow, that's cool. So, that's what happened this date in history, according to those piggish guys over on PIGazette.com, the politically incorre incorrect gazette. Thank you, Hambo and Porkus, for another romp through silliness. And uh, I don't think I see anything else over here that's really, really, really just tripping my triggers. So, I suppose I probably ought to get around to saying, um, um, yeah, guess what's coming up? Later this evening, there is no Freakers Ball. So, just so y'all know, so nobody comes back and goes, wait a minute, there's no Freakers Ball. There's no balls to the wall. Sorry. They're taking the Friday off. Well deserved, I might add. So, um, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, Flash a Rooney Dork is going to be coming on with the Dork Table all the way from Denmark here on reallibertymedia.com. On Sunday at noon Eastern Time is going to be Grimner, who's going to be playing some blues for you and a rousing game of chat. Or trivia going on in the chat. Yeah, a rousing game of chat going on in the trivia. Get your turds wormed around here. Um, closely followed by Hal Anthony at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, who's going to take you yo ass behind the woodshed and open up a can of whoop ass. Then on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Grimm's going to be opening up some leftovers. Am I correct, Grimm? You still going to be doing Grimm's leftovers Monday? I hope so, because I just told everybody you are. And Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in a perfect world with Flash and Vinny. I will be back on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. And yeah, it will actually be a Wackadoodle Wednesday on a Wednesday as opposed to my calendar challenged Wednesday this week. <laughs> Next week, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time is 20% off with Flash Somebody. And then, next week, Friday, Ponder Gander at 1 p.m. Eastern Time with Vinny. So, that's pretty much a week for you. And there's all kinds of things going on, you know, in the uh, rotation play. So, come on over to Real Liberty Media. Join the chat. Listen in. You never know. You might learn something. I know I learn something every day. Sometimes it's lessons that I go, I really didn't want to learn that. I just really, I did not need that mental image. But, you know, sometimes you just plain get them anyway. Because they're so helpful over here in the RLM chat. Yay, Grimmy says he's still doing leftovers. But he is taking tonight off. Um, no, I am not going to have a McShit burger. Sorry, guys. 
That's just, I'm going to read this thing over here on Twitter. Apparently, Beyond Meat CEO Ethan Brown says that he wants the company to have at least one product cheaper than meat in five years. Hmm, one product cheaper than meat. Well, you know, the rate meat's going, it's probably anything will be cheaper than meat. Just saying. Because meat's really, meat prices are going up. At least out here in the boonies they are. And we grow it out here. So, go figure. Um, Grow it, raise it, whatever. Let's see, is there anything else that I just plain can't live without doing before I sign off on this freaking Freaker Friday? What's the deal with, I'm getting all these damn ads from Flo from Progressive on. It's like the second thing in my Twitter feed. All the time when I refresh, Flo, go away, you're irritating. Jeez. Does country music suck? It does now. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, Gary L. just posted this, well, 26 minutes ago. Geneva blocks the erection of 5G mobile antennas. It's an erection, I tell ya. Cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. I'm just going to, just so I can share the link, because, you know, I already did a 5G thing, so, yeah. Um, it's from lanews.ch. Apparently, last week, Antonio Hodges, the head of Geneva's executive, announced a ban on the erection of further 5G mobile antennas in the canton, according to an interview on RTS. Cool. Motivated by the uncertainty on the potential health effects of the new technology, the temporary freeze is the most um, cantonal, cantonal, is that how you say that? Um that government can do to stop the rollout of the technology. Switzerland's federal government in Bern calls the shot or yeah, calls the shots when it comes to the overall plan on 5G rollout, and the cantons are only responsible for putting the plan into action. Ah so thank you, Gary L. I'm going to go ahead and put this over here in the chitty chat. And then I'm going to get the heck out of here. Because you know what? I got some rumblies going on in the tumbly. And uh, I need some supper. So, y'all have an absolutely amazing weekend. I am going to be busy, busy, busy going to Hayes to see my mom tomorrow. So, um, in the interim, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>